For our hypothesis test, we can make a decision by comparing a test statistic to a critical value or by calculating the associated p-value and comparing this to the chosen significance level. With the critical value approach, if the test statistic is larger than the critical value in absolute value, we will reject the null hypothesis. With the p-value approach, we reject the null if the p-value is less than the significance level. If, on the other hand, the test statistic is less than the critical value in absolute value, or the p-value is greater than the significance level, we will fail to reject the null. Recall, we have the following hypotheses, and the test statistic is negative 2.6 with a corresponding p-value of 0.47%. Using a significance level of 5%, we found the critical value to be negative 1.65. We can see that the test statistic of negative 2.6 is larger than the critical value in absolute value, and that the p-value of 0.47% is smaller than the significance level. We will reject the null hypothesis and conclude that we have evidence to believe the alternative hypothesis is likely true, that Kian's IQ is likely less than 130. Suppose instead that Kian's average over the four tests had been 128, we would end up with a test statistic of negative 0.4 and a corresponding p-value of about 34.5% if we use the normal distribution as an approximation. In this scenario, based on the test statistic of negative 0.4 and the p-value of 34.5%, we would fail to reject the null hypothesis and conclude that we do not have sufficient evidence to believe that the alternative is likely true. It is important to note that failing to reject the null is not the same as proving it to be true or accepting its truth. Thanks for watching this video. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel, like us on Facebook, and visit our website.